Now, which niche of the executive market does the Alpha 164 Lusso Automatic drop into? Well, it's for those with a generous budget at their disposal and a fleet manager who isn't too worried by the prospect of steep depreciation. Perhaps Saab have attracted more executives to their models, but there can't be many middle management transport budgets which will stretch to accommodate this CD version. Maybe it's moved above the market it was originally aimed at. A substantially cheaper choice would be the equivalent model from Lancia's Thema range, but not enough user-choosers exercise their privilege to keep the Lancia importer independent. It's now firmly back under Fiat's wing. Now, the thing that unites all these cars is money, not what it costs to buy them in the showroom, but what it costs to develop them. Because all three cars, plus incidentally the Fiat Chroma, share the same floor pan. The manufacturers got together and they pooled their resources to come up with a new executive car. They'd all put different bodies on and different engines, but they'd share the same floor pan and that would save them a lot of money in coming out with a new model. Now this is the latest product of that cooperation. It's the automatic version of the Alpha 164. It's a very important car for the British market because Alfa Romeo have significantly failed in the past to crack the executive fleet sector. If they can't do it with this car, they won't do it at all. And they hope to avenge with this model some of the disappointments of the past. This is a booted version of the familiar Saab 9000 hatchback and in this form it's a, a very highly specified and extremely expensive vehicle. It's £28,000 on the road. £1,500 of that is taken up with a, a very sophisticated sound system that incorporates a CD player. Incidentally, it also occupies the space that would be taken up by the ashtray and cigar lighter. And there's a little discreet sign saying no smoking. That won't impress some executives I know. This is very much the flagship of the Lancia range. I've always called it the Thema, but I'm reliably informed I ought to call it the Tamer. In SE form, it's very well equipped up to the specification of the other two and certainly very good value on the road. The only thing you can't get is an automatic gearbox with the turbo. But like the other two cars, it's got a, a six-year anti-corrosion warranty. Now, while all these cars share the same floor pan and they've all got front-wheel drive, the designers have got very different ideas when it comes to power plants. The fuel-injected V6 in the Alpha is the most charismatic and the best-looking unit. There's a broad band of tremendous power and torque, and it mates well with the automatic. Saab's 2-litre 16-valve unit goes down the turbo road, but it's a poor match with its automatic. It seems to smother the power and hunts up and down when cruising. At Lancia's heart is another 16-valve 2-litre, but it's got a smaller, higher revving turbo, which gives a wider spread of power. The differences continue when it comes to luggage capacity. The Alpha suffers from a high sill and rather a narrow slot for inserting anything more than the standard Italian briefcase. The Saab's better with the boot lid lifting well up out of the way, but like the others, it stores its spare wheel under the floor. Saab alone fit a narrow space saver wheel, but at least that helps give it a much greater boot capacity. The Tamer, for instance, has 18.9 cubic feet, one more than the Alpha, but five cubic feet less than the Saab. The Alpha Romeo betrays the influence of the stylist on the interior much more than the other two. All the minor instruments and controls come together beautifully. It's also fitted with, uh, in the Lusso model, electric rear passenger seats, although I, I note on this 7,000 mile example, one of them already doesn't work. And it also means that the seats can't fold down for extra rear luggage space. Scandinavian design has tended in the past to be rather austere and spartan, but the interior of this Saab with its supple Scottish leather and its English walnut reminds you more of a, a Victorian gentleman's smoking club than anything. Despite that, it's the most comfortable of the three cars. Inside the Lancia, very Italian in feel, they trim it in Alcantara, a cloth that looks and feels very much like suede. There's lots of room for oddment storage in this car as well, in the door pockets down here, and it's also got the only glove box with space to rest your glasses of executive wine. So the cars are very different under the skin, but what are they like on the road?
Let's find out. I've always loved the Alpha V6 unit. It's got a, a lovely exhaust snarl to it, and despite the automatic gearbox, it hasn't lost that appeal. The handling, well, that's flat and uh, secure, big fat tyres, very high level of adhesion on the road. It's not all sweetness and light, though. It's got a, an over-large turning circle, this car, and I find these uniform switches on the panel rather confusing once you're on the move. On the road in the Saab, you're immediately aware that there is still some turbo lag. The classic situation, you come up behind a lorry, you pull out to overtake, put your foot flat on the floor, and there's a, a heart-stopping instant when it doesn't actually go. And then the turbo comes in and you accelerate through. On its big fat tyres, it's got extremely high levels of road holding and adhesion. In fact, it's the, the ultimate gentleman's express. In the Lancia, you're immediately aware of the tremendous power and torque from the turbocharged engine. There's less turbo lag than there was in the Saab, but because it's got a manual gearbox and there isn't the cushioning effect of the automatic, it's quite easy to get quite violent wheel spin when pulling away from a T-junction, especially on a, a wet road. But apart from that, the uh, handling and the tyre adhesion is very high order indeed, certainly well up to the other two cars. It's very, very fast. I mean, it does 140 miles an hour, but if you want to go completely over the top, you can even double your money and buy a Ferrari engine version. So which car to go for? Well, in fact, it's quite a difficult choice for the lucky executive because all three cars have such distinct personalities. The Alpha is undoubtedly the best looking and the best style, but I resent this loss of an inch of headroom that Pininfarina has imposed in order to get those flowing lines. The Saab, well, it's very safe and secure, it feels very well built. And the Lancia, with its immensely powerful engine, represents tremendous appeal for the driver. Which one would I go for? Well, if my company would allow the extra £6,000 on the budget, I'd have to select the Saab.